Good morning. Today we're going to be continuing on with our doubly linked list. We're looking at the idea of the design for our doubly linked list abstract base class as well as the classes that are going to inherit from it. So we can use that to start seeing how we're going to be building and putting these pieces together. As you can see, we have on screen, we have our basic structure right here. Um, right over here, we have our doubly linked list abstract base class. We're using the italics to indicate that it's abstract right here. And we have the virtual um, methods of add and remove. We have them also identified here so we can explicitly see that they're going to be virtual with that and so they're completely abstract. And that's what specifically makes it so we have to have concrete implementations for that subclass. And we've already looked at the code for that in our previous video. But as you can see right here, we have a couple subtypes of that class so we can actually see how this is going to be put together. And so inheriting from double link list, we have a circular list, a queue, a stack, and a double list, so we can have a little bit of a different name type on there. And our stack and queue, our destructive data structures, ones that we have to make sure we understand that we've actually been using since we were small children. Um, our circular list is the idea of having a data structure we can use, so we can actually store information in a list that's a circle, so both the front and the end talk to each other, and so the information can wrap around. And there are a couple different uh, reasons we can actually use that, usually for networks and stuff like that. And then just the more traditional double list, so we can actually see what the impact is of having an extra pointer. So we can be able to go forward and backward through a list and use that to do some interesting things. Um, again, we have the idea of the fact that the node of type is that base class that we're using for all these structures, and then the bidirectional node inherits from that, and then the, the doubling link list is composed of somewhere between zero to n of those nodes. And that goes to show for all these different subclasses as well. Um, if we look at the stack class, we can see that we have our stack constructor and destructor, pretty much standard for that. The stack has its three special methods of push, pop, and peak. The uh, push method adds to the stack. The pop method is a destructive method that returns the current thing that's at the top of the stack, or at the end. And then the peak also returns just the value so you can actually see what it is, so you can actually just look at it. And then we have our um, required methods of add and remove. And we'll talk about how we're going to actually implement those so that it doesn't cause any possible problem with them, even though the, the stack itself has specific ways to get the add and remove. We'll see how we implement that. The same goes for Q. Q has the constructor and destructor as well as those add and remove methods. I have to move them up here for this just so we can see how it looks a little bit different because it doesn't matter where they are placed inside our UML diagram, but as long as we actually have the representation for it there. And then the special methods for Q are NQ, DQ, and PEAK. Again, keeping the idea of peaks, so we can actually see what's in there without actually destroying the data because we don't have the way to actually just get something from that. And then we have our circular list, add, remove, and add an index, where all we're going to be worrying about to actually show how that works. Uh, then we have our more advanced version of the list, which is our double list of type. And so again, we still have the same front end and size data members that we have to deal with for all of that. And we have our add and remove, which will automatically set to add from the <clears throat> well, the add method, which will automatically add to the end, and the remove, which will pass it based on an index. And then we have a couple special methods we're going to be going for that with add front, add end, the add index, add index fast, get from index, and get from index fast. So we can actually see what the time difference is on using the doubly linked list versus a single linked list, as well as using what we have automatically using a built-in array or other data structure inside C++. And so we have our design document we've got right here we've been using to actually see how we're putting that together. As you can see, there's a relationship between all these pieces that we're using. And so let's go ahead and we're going to take a look at the code that goes along with that as well. First thing we look at is the stack data structure. Um, with our stack, again, we're going to start off with the idea that we are always going to have that hashtag include of doubly linked list um, because it inherits from that. And so we also see that public inheritance line right here. It's inheriting from doubly linked list of type. And we have the fact that we have all the methods we are going to be using for this, and we're just um, doing the add or move. We have those concrete implementations of the abstract base class methods, as well as pop, push, and peak. So we can actually deal with those uh, lovely special methods that deal with that. And then we've got our lovely information right here. Our constructor that we have for stack is going to be the, just an empty constructor because the base class, the double link list class we've already seen, that constructor initializes the three data members that already exist within our base class of the head or front, the end, and size, those three data members are already initialized properly inside that constructor. So by simply doing this colon and then call the superclasses constructor, that takes care of everything we need for the constructor. For our destructor, because it is just a linear data structure, we have that same structure of where we simply just create a pointer reference to the front and iterate over the entire data structure, deleting them as we need. There's no big change from this other than the fact that this is a bidirectional node instead of a node of type. It's the same exact destructor we saw in list and array because it's doing the exact same thing. And because we're not caring about any of the data that's in that, we don't have to worry about the fact that we should be normally using the push, the pop, the peak because we're actually just deleting every memory reference on that. So there's no need to worry about the structural um, direction we do when we actually take apart the actual data structure. So we don't have to go in a specific order for that. Now, we have the required method of add. 
because add is inherited that abstract method. But what we're going to do is to make sure add works properly. We're simply going to use add to call the push method. And the push method is the one that we should be using by default on this um, data structure of a stack. And so we just call the push method as part of that, making it really uh, easy to go. As you can see, we have our push method that goes along with that. We have a nice little um, documentation comments right here explaining the steps that go along with the push sequence. So you can actually see how that's put together. We go ahead and take a look at the code that goes along with that. As you can see, if we were to take each of these numbered sequences of one through five, if we took this if else as each one statement, so if that is true, else that's happening, we have those same five sequences happening. So I create a node pointer, call it add to stack, passing it the value that I want to put inside that data structure. I verify that any of these three conditions are true, which is what would initialize a default list because it's at the beginning. So if it's, a, if it's at the beginning, it's a special case. I have to actually handle that properly. Otherwise, I'm, at the, um, I'm not at the beginning of my, of my stack. And so I'm going to grab the end of the stack. I'm going to add that stack to there and then set the previous pointer to point to what was the end. Now, regardless of what I do on either of these two conditions, I do have to move the end to reflect to the new stack. So I have that lovely one right here where I do this set end and I pass out that new node that I just created and I automatically update my size. And because this is a void method, that's into the, the method. Really easy to do. And again, we're using inheritance. So because I'm using inheritance, I use the accessor methods of this selector get size or this selector set size because it's a private data member and private data and private data must be accessed with a method associated with it. We don't have simply get to touch a, um, pri a private information. So we call the public accessor. So we can manipulate that information as needed. We have a required remove method that is passed a specific index. And we're gonna make sure that index is only the proper value you can actually use on that. So we're using an assert statement. Our assert statement that we're gonna to use to make sure the remove is the only proper value is we're gonna assert that index is equal to this.getSize minus one. You can only remove the last thing. Any other call to the remove method will crash the program because it'll fail that assert command. Because again, we want to have the user actually use the pop method. That's the um, preferred method for dealing with this. And so if they pass it any other index that is not the last index of it, aka size minus one, we're not gonna have this work. Of course, we wanna make sure that size is greater than equal to zero. Always doing a, a full and proper test on our assert methods. And other than that, we just call the pop method again. And we return what pop does because pop will do all the associated work that actually happens when we remove something. So here we have our pop method. Again, when we pop, we do have to make sure that there's actually something inside the list. We can't remove an empty list, it'll just crash and burn. So we have to actually have an assert statement to go along with that. We have a removed variable. That's gonna grab what was originally at the ends location again, because it's a private data. We have that public accessor to get the information for that. We then use the get node data inherited method from the node class that works even on a bidirectional node. And then we have that bidirectional node pointer update, which is gonna to point to the end. We're then gonna set update to be the previous one, the one that's right before that. And provided that's not null, in case we have, for example, a size one list, we don't wanna make, um, do anything with that. We're going to set update the next pointer to point to null. So the, the pointer that was pointing at the, to the end spot is not going to point to null. Now that I've done that, I'm going to go ahead and delete the node that was at that spot because I've already retrieved the value from it. So that memory location is attached at, at this selector end. I want to delete that actual memory location. And then I want to change where end is pointing to, to that new one, the one that update has been updated to reflect. And once that's done, I want to update my size appropriately, have size go down by one. And finally, that value that I um, retrieved from the original end of the data structure, I want to grab that value and return it back to the user so they can use it if they need it. So the um, pop method works really easily. Our peak method, or look at what's currently at the top of the stack or at the end of the, of the list, is really, really hard. We make sure that our size is greater than zero, making sure we're not empty. And then I simply return the reference to that node data. I pass that right there. Really a, um, a fairly easy method. And so that our stack method, pretty easy to go. When we take a look at the Q class, you can see we again we have those lovely three um, methods of. Or the <clears throat> when we look at the Q class, we can see again that it also inherits publicly from doubly linked list of types, so it has the hashtag include as well, and it has its two required methods of add and remove inside the class header definition, and then the three special methods that we want to actually use when we're dealing with the Q of Q, NQ, DQ, and peak. And so again, just like we saw on the stack constructor, the Q constructor merely calls the double linked list um, abstract base classes constructor because that does enough work, so we just use that. The same D structure as list array and stack because it's the same linear data structure component style. So again, it just grabs a pointer, starts off and deletes each node as we go through it. Again, we don't have to do anything special, so we don't have to spend a lot of time on that. Now, when we have our add method, again, just like we saw within the stack class, the Q subclass is gonna um, use the add method to call the special method for Q. In this case, it's gonna call NQ passing it the value. 
So we take a look at their NQ method. Our NQ method is also of type void. And again, we create a brand new pointer. We set it with an inserted value, also just like we did in Sedon. We verify that if the size is zero or that the um, front and end are pointing to null pointer, again, that should only happen if and only if we're at the beginning of the list. We have a special case. In this case, we wanna set the front to that. Otherwise, no matter what we're doing, we're adding it to the end. And so we're gonna grab the end, set its next pointer to point to that added, set the previous pointer in this one to point to what was at the end. So I can grab that spot. Then we have to adjust for all of them, regardless of what we're doing, we have to tell the end that it's now gonna point to this brand new node, whichever one we just put in. Whether it's a size zero and we just added a node, or it's a list of whatever size and we're putting this one at the end, we always need to make end point to this new node way over here at the end of the list. And again, because of we're changing the size, we always have to update the size. So the NQ method works just like we saw inside stack, it's just going a little bit different direction. And if you take a closer look at that, you can actually see how those happen. With the remove method, again, it's gonna have that same approach where we have to have the uh, nice assert statement verifying the index is the only index you can actually remove from on a queue, in this case, zero. And making sure the size itself is also greater than zero. We can only remove things if it's possible. So making sure both those cases are true is the only way we can actually have that happen. And then we simply just call the DQ method because that is gonna take care of it for us. We wanna take a, a closer look at our DQ method as we go through our, D, um, our queue structure from C++. As you can see, we have our lovely do documentation comments that go through the steps that we're actually going through as we actually remove something from the list. And so again, we start off with the assert, making sure our size is within the proper range, aka it's at least one or bigger. We then make a type of remove value. We access this by going this selector get front, and we call from that method, we get the get node data, so we grab the data out of the front, because so we're always removing from the front on the queue. We then make a new pointer. Um, it's just a, a reference to front, so we can go through it. We then check to see if we're at the front of the actual list, because if the list is one, then we're moving from, we're just gonna do everything immediately, so we're gonna set the front and end both to null pointer, because when we're at that point, nothing needs to be kept, and we're just gonna remove them out of the way. Otherwise, I'm not at the front, so what I need to do first is I need to set front to be the previous front, aka remove me, I need to get its next pointer. And then I'm gonna set the front, its previous pointer, so that new front that I just moved, I wanna have it point to null. So I want to make sure that I have it so I have the size adjusted properly. Then I need to deallocate the memory that is assigned to the front pointer originally. And so I delete remove me, which is the pointer that's setting to the front. And then I adjust my size appropriately. I've already moved front to now be the one that's next to it, so I don't have to worry about updating that again. And then finally, that remove value, the value that's originally stored inside the front of my um, queue, I return that value from the list. And that's where we go from there. And again, peak, same basic structure on peak inside a queue. The queue peak is also going to just go through and look at what's happening. Again, making sure that there is a size that we can actually grab something from. And if there is a size, we're simply going to grab that value from it and actually take a look at it. And so the idea of using stack and queue as it inherits from the doubly linked list class, which we looked at last time. So I go over here into my data structures and doubly linked list. We have all that lovely information that happens right here. So we have that constructor that we just mentioned a few more a few times ago where the constructor initializes all the data members that we have to have, because that works just great, we can use that. We also have these lovely um, getters and setters for the data members that we have to have access to all the time. And if we're gonna use a copy constructor, they have to make sure those are set for const. And so we have them already predefined for that. And so we have that information already ready for us. And so since we have that information ready to go, we have the uh, all the stuff that we have to do for that. We have these methods already predefined in our doubly linked list class. And so even though it's an abstract class because we have these two methods right here, a virtual void add and virtual type remove um, passing it and sending them equal to zero, even though it makes that an abstract base class, we can have fully implemented methods that we don't have to worry about other than that already defined, for example, for our getters and setters because those are there available for us the entire way through. We'll continue on with this. We can take a look at the more advanced methods we're going to be using inside the other classes that inherit from double link list, and that would be the double list and the circular list, and we'll be taking a look at those next time in our lecture. If you have any questions, please make sure you um, review the videos and have a great day. Thanks. Bye-bye.